very grateful that Verena uh, from uh, Mumbles is going to introduce our topic for this evening uh, about uh, about visual church and aspects of, uh, of visual and and sight loss and the challenges of that and how we respond as as uh, as Christians and as churches to some of those uh, challenges and help people to feel included uh, in all the things that we do because that's the, the the title more able church sort of gives away what we're here for uh, to to enable the church to to enable others to participate more fully in in the life and worship of, of what we do in an inclusive uh, way recognizing that we're we're all a diverse community we're all differently abled in different ways and we want to uh, acknowledge that and respect that and uh, find ways to help people uh, participate with dignity uh, and in meaningful ways. I'm just going to begin with a, a reading from John's Gospel, chapter 6. Uh, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But I said to you that you have seen me and yet do not believe. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away. Well, this is Charlotte Hellier, um, poet and hymn writer, uh, who wrote the hymn Just As I Am. We won't spend a long time if you want to find out more about her there's plenty written about her and by her um she uh, she contracted a, a an illness in her early 30s and uh became disabled through that and um through that and um depression and uh, and so her life was a struggle uh, to the point where she was even doubting her faith uh, and, and a conversation uh, with a minister from Geneva. It just was one of those penny-dropping, clicking moments. Uh, she didn't think she was worthy. She didn't think she was worth anything. And uh, And that passage... Anyone who comes to me, I will never drive away of Jesus' words. That passage was the the link for her. It was the one she held on to, and it was the one that she wrote this, uh, this hymn for. Just as I am without a plea, we know it. But as I was preparing for Disability Awareness a week, um, this him game into my head in a different way. So I'm just going to read it through. Just as I am without a plea, I wonder if there's room for me. And you would bidst me come to thee. O oh, church people, I come, I come. Just as I am in my wheelchair, I hope you will not stop and stare. To you who fellowship do share, O oh, church people, I come, I come. Just as I am, pardon, I can't hear. I'm nervous, and I live in fear. I'd love to join in just here. Oh, church people, I come. I come. Just as I am, I'd best go home. There's no room here for my syndrome. I cannot sit still. I need to roam. 
Oh, church people, I've gone. I've gone. Mm. Let us pray. Loving God, we praise you that you make each one of us and together wonderfully made. Part of your awesome creation. And within it all is a great diversity. Something to be celebrated. And within it is your image implanted into human beings. The capacity to give love and to receive love. To share love and to not turn away. We come to you tonight just as we are. We come to each other just as we are. Holy Spirit of God, open our <coughs> hearts, open our minds, inspire our thoughts and our words and ultimately our actions that we may be a more able church. In Jesus' name, amen. Speaker tonight. Thank you. Sabina, thank you for for being volunteered to do this and uh, and being willing to do it. Thank you very much, Jason, and thank you all. I feel very privileged, um, but in some ways very humbled because I can only share from my own experience um, of my own eye condition and as you know there are many different eye conditions and their visual per perception can be very different to what I have however I will share about what my problem is I've got something called keratoconus now kerato is the latin for the cornea the clear window at the front of the eye and the conus bit is basically conical so put in layman's terms that it was given to me 50 years ago when I was diagnosed with this instead of having round eyes I actually have not football shaped eyes but rugby shaped eyes okay. the the um, cornea dips forward slightly and consequently I get a lot of visual distortion. The way I see things is very different. Um, I've been on the sight loss register for 50 years now um, and actually registered partially sighted since 1997. What I actually see is in some ways similar to people who have astigmatism. There is a distortion in the shape and the ways I see. I was originally treated with contact lenses, which actually they were um, surgical glass ones, which pushed the cornea back into position and gave vision. But in the end, my eyes wouldn't tolerate those. So I had a um, a corneal graft at one point, uh, but now I have to balance between two pairs of glasses for different tasks. Because I also lack collagen, which is a side of the, the, the deformity I have, uh, my eyes are weak, so it's not easy to look down for any length of time or up. And I have extreme light sensitivity, which I'm sure a lot of you would have. As we get older, it's a natural thing. But I've always had that, unfortunately. And one of the distinctive things with what I've got is that I get what's called haloing. If you can think of a single light, what I see in bright lights are like a daisy with um, haloing right round of the image. One of my big things is judging distances. Um, I've never been able to drive because of my vision. And 
this sounds comical, at times embarrassing. I discern people not by their features because I can't see them, but by their shapes. And I've said that in some places and it's got me into trouble, as you can imagine. But I am thankful that I look normal. That might sound awful, but, you know, a number of people have said to me, we never knew you couldn't see very well. So I'm grateful for that. Uh, and I thank God for a sense of humour um, because we've had some amusing incidents even within the family. I thought I was passing a herd of cows. It turned out it was people playing a game of cricket. But my vision can actually change daily. What I see today may well be different tomorrow. And my balance is badly affected, as is anybody who has a sight problem. To help, I have to use four sorts of eye drops every day. But there have been situations I've struggled with and just briefly, not I never like to major on how things affect me, but I realise in this sort of session, I need to lay myself bare, as it were. I find dealing with crowds or um, extreme noise quite difficult. Again, another thing which my family have had to cope with is I often am known to cremate food. <laughs> Because to me, colours are not so clear or so dark as they seem to be in actual life, apparently. My husband is sitting here in the room and he hates me to say I actually cross roads using my ears because I cannot judge how close or how far away a vehicle is. And I have problems with going down curbs and steps. If items are too close together or unfamiliar in places, as in shops, I find that difficult. And going downstairs can be a problem. Also, the logistics of unknown places. Bus stops is another thing, and people can be extremely rude. I've been um, spoken to quite fiercely by somebody when I've asked could you tell me what bus is coming up? And they'll say something like, you've got eyes in your head, why don't you use them? And you have to basically tell them. And I don't work very well with people crowding me. Um, and of course, numbers is another one that's quite a common thing. Threes for fives, fives for eights, etc. I am unable to read narrow columns such as a, a newspaper or even a Bible. I have to have a Bible that goes straight across the, pa the page. And fortunately, I do have one, NRSV, but it actually has four volumes. So you have to know which volume or which part of the Bible somebody's going to preach from. I taught music for many years, and just as um, we were chatting beforehand, things like dots and tails of music can be a difficulty as well. And all these things can affect my confidence, and I do think if a person can't see very well, their confidence is sorely um, pressed, and it can make life difficult. I have to sometimes force myself to go on a bus, just one bus into Swansea, because otherwise I would lose my confidence to do it. So I have to make myself do that. And sadly, I hate to say it, there are quite a few pitfalls in modern technology. Zoom, it works well, but it can be quite a strain, focusing and looking. TV is another thing. I like to watch what I can, but I, there are certain things I don't see. PowerPoint, OHP, projected images, dare I say more, and mobile phones. 
tablets, iPads, very grateful for them, but sometimes they create more problems. But I do have my own coping mechanisms, things that help me daily. Um, I use a thick black big biro, but not the ones that you can get just off the shelf, as it were. I order them from Amazon. They are the 1.6 um, thick nib. Um, for me, a felt tip pen is too fuzzy. It merges into the neighbouring letter and is no good. I also use, and people know me when I'm speaking, I use my yellow lined paper, which is wonderful because there's no glare as you get with white paper. I have day glow, bright pink bump ons that go onto the stove and the washing machine. So I know where certain settings are. And I have dedicated def defined places for things. And I sometimes lay out my clothes the previous night just in case in the morning when my vision is not so good, I can't see what I'm doing. Task lighting is extremely important. Not surrounding light, but light on what you are doing. And that's something that perhaps we need to focus on for church too. My mobile phone, which is a great tool. My son-in-law, who's a great whiz kid, has actually managed to um, put settings so that I can dictate texts. Uh, and similarly on my iPad, although I do have to check things over because they don't always pick up exactly what I am saying. Little things about personal care that I find helpful. People say to me, why don't you go grey gracefully? And yes, I would love to. But if I let my grey hair come through, I can't see it. So that's a problem. Anybody with very clever ideas, I'd love to hear from you. And the other thing which people laugh about me, I always have brightly coloured toenails. And that is because I can then see them to be able to cut them. I've thankfully not had to resort to somebody else cutting them for me. But I say those are looking at the difficulties and I don't want to um, rely on those things, sort of things because there are answers. I've been blessed. Um, I'm very much aware that so often my dare I say catchphrase that's the wrong thing is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me but I've just highlighted the particular pitfalls and difficulties which I suffer with my eye defect but so many other people with differing eye uh, um, problems will see things in a different way now, I've been asked, as you know, to um, poise some questions for our breakout rooms. And I've thought about these because I've often wondered, going into situations myself, how people would feel when they're faced, perhaps with their own failing sight or people close at hand to them. We are told that six people every minute are being told that they are losing their sight. That's a sobering fact. Um, and we as churches do need to be prepared for that and to be able to help anybody who might come in. So my two questions, well, one's got two clauses and then there's a second question for the breakout rooms are Marina, all, if, Marina yes Jason I, shall, shall we keep the second one a surprise for 
for for when we go into the second breakout room. So we'll just give everybody the one, the first question. Yeah, with, with pleasure. It just got a, a sort of second clause, hasn't it? Okay. The first question at the moment is. If you personally were diagnosed with a serious progressive sight problem, what do you think you might, sorry, what do you think might be the hardest thing to which to adapt? I'll read that again. If you were diagnosed with a serious progressive sight problem, what do you think might be the hardest thing to which to adopt, adapt. And then from that, how might you go about trying to cope with such? The second bit is where can we find things to help us? And this is personally, but it also applies very much to within the church and things that personally i must admit i have used and found helpful not only to me uh, but generally to start with these days if somebody is diagnosed with a progressive sight problem that you know could go downhill quite rapidly the first port of call and usually they are referred to them is what's known as the eclo or the Eye Clinic Liaison Officer. Uh, we have one here in Singleton, and I'm sure a lot of hospitals where there's an eye department will have one, and they often are able to point you in the right um, direction to get more specific help for what your eye condition needs. Um, but that is a very good port of call. Um, often they will um, refer you to social services. And I mean, all of these bodies can be approached personally oneself. Um, here in Wales, we have the RNIB or it's Cymru Sight Life. And again, there are things and um, aids that can be bought from there or just general advice. They have a lot of groups going on. It's amazing what they will do, football, um, a tennis, um, all sorts of things adapted for people with sight loss. Um, as mentioned, I also have um, a, a badge from the Partially Sighted Society, which has got the partially sighted um, symbol on it, Yellow background with black lettering, um, and I wear that when I'm going anywhere by myself. It just alerts people. And if you remember, during lockdown, um, anybody who had unseen disabilities was encouraged to use a sunflower lanyard. And it's a similar sort of thing, alerting people to something that is there. And people will ask if they see people using it. Um, and then there's obviously guide dogs. And I have been offered the ability to have a guide dog. It's something that we haven't followed up yet. Um, but it is always there. But not only the guide dogs and the leading, they do have um, for children, buddies, and they also have other um, people who will help and come and take uh, people with failing sight out for a walk to, to trace a route perhaps to a new shop they want to go, all these sort of things. And I found them very good. They do a lot of campaigning. And here in Mumbles, we have a lot of narrow pavements and we get a lot of pavement parking, which is really not good, particularly when you can't see and judge where curbs are. So they are very good in their campaigning and trying to sort things out. But first and foremost, the most important help to me in my Christian life, in my church life too, 
has been the Ministry of Torch Trust. Whenever I go on deputation speak, speaking for Torch, I often get asked the question, what is Torch Trust? We've never heard of it. Um, and I was introduced to it by my caseworker uh, 50 years ago, whose name amusedly was Olive Light. Um, and she introduced me to this um, charity whose prime aim is enabling people to live as full a Christian life as they possibly could. Um, and for me, it was a real eye-opener um, in a lot of ways. And I was able to access their big print um, books, 30, size 30 font, some of them 25, but very accessible. And when I've had times when I've not been able to wear glasses and that, there are also all sorts of media that you can have. It used to be the old cassettes. These days, it's usually USB, although still stuff is on um, uh, CDs. But there are lots of helps like that. They have all these free lending libraries. And if you were to come across somebody in your church who needed Braille, they have all those things, which is probably something that we don't think about. But mm -hmm. there are situations where Braille is necessary. And we used to have um, one girl coming to the local torch group, and I'll mention those more in a minute, um, and she used to do the Bible reading because it was really quite educational to the rest of us to see her hands gliding over the pages as she read out to us scripture. But Torch Trust, my role, as I say, I was to, first of all somebody who actually was benefiting from them. But then in 2008 came the opportunity um, for me to take up a voluntary post. All of this is in retirement. It's quite amusing, isn't it? Um, and that was to become regional coordinator for South Wales. Um, and I am now the chairperson of the Swansea Torch Group, which is the largest one in Wales. Um, and that was just basically visiting, showing pastoral care to the existing groups. Because you see what is important, and this is something we can apply to church life most definitely, is the need to have fellowship. People with sight problems, perhaps because they lack confidence and can't go out and go to certain meetings, midweek Bible groups, as Adela um, focused in on our breakout room, perhaps a, a nighttime meeting or service because of the dark, they can feel very much isolated and alone. Um, so that's why we have torch fellowship groups, which meet usually monthly on the blind person or partially sighted person's terms. Everything is there in position to help them. Um, they also operate holidays in various centres. They do training to help the blind and the partially sighted, but also to teach people, and they come to do this in churches, which again I will explain um, the right way. There is a, a sort of leading and guiding blind etiquette of how to do it or how not to do it properly. One thing they um, introduced um, so not so long ago is the whole context of what they call sight loss friendly church. I'm very pleased to say that Tabernacle in Mumbles is a sight loss friendly church. In fact, it's the only one in Swansea at the moment. Um, it's a simple thing to sign up to, but there are certain things 
um, as we've often been told, we have bumblebee tape round our platform. So people, if anybody were to go to the platform to do a reading, say, they could see the step. We have large print hymn books and Bible portions and also the Sight Loss Friendly Church, which introduces people to the, the right way to do things, has numerous free resources, offers advice online through hard copies and so much more. They will do anything to support those who come to them. Now, if you were to go, and I'm sure we can perhaps distribute this online to torchtrust.org, you would see if you looked at the site loss friendly church, all that they can do. There is training, as mentioned, the blind etiquette, and they also um, have various things, what they call worship for all which are tools similar um, to what Jason has described for printing things and doing anything that we might need to make our churches more site friendly. So that's just things in a nutshell, but there is a lot there um, to look at, to look into um, and I mean, I'm very happy to sort of come around if anybody would like um, for me to share further. However, you know, whatever way um, I've done that for, for Torch for, you know, a good amount of time now. And I, I'm grateful to be able to put something in to something that has been a tremendous help to me for so long. Um, but. You know, there are lots of helps out there. There is so much that we can be pulled and brought in. Um, so, you know, there are plenty of helps. And Torch is my number one, dare I say. I think we're, we're going to have a bit of a kind of plenary session. Mm. You Do you have another question? I do have another one, and this may well fit in um, with what we think. It was, Judy, if a partially sighted or blind person unexpectedly came into your church for the first time, how confident would you feel in trying to welcome them and cope with their special needs? Oh. So uh, maybe we'll have a quick kind of uh, conversation, maybe if there's anybody got any thoughts about how they would respond to that, uh, we can do that. And then we'll open um, the platform up for you to ask questions of Verena and um, we'll gain some more valuable information from her because uh, she's a minefield. Oh, <laughs> So what's your thoughts about how we how would we respond if somebody just turned up or as a, we like to say in the Synod support team, rock up to um, your church and um, what would you do? Are you prepared? Are you ready? Yeah, we do have a certain number of large print uh hymns and psalms in the box. And uh, a pretty friendly church, I think. Somebody would be willing to to help and uh, help find numbers and things as well, mm. if, if necessary. Yeah, yeah, that's helpful. Thanks, Heather. I know when we've we printed out, um, hit, we want to include a, a new hymn or something that's not in the hymn book. We will re reproduce it in a usually a, a minimum of. Uh, point 16 but then we will also do a large print version because we do have a good number of people who have got sight problems which is something that you know that people have seemed to have come to our church because of that is it is there anything else anybody's anna 
Yeah, hi Judy um, and all. Uh, Verena, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. Um, and it, it's it's difficult sometimes to appreciate, you, isn't it? You try to want you want to try to live in somebody else's shoes, but mm -hmm. you don't really know. So what I wanted to share with everybody, I shared it in my group, is that November is Sensory Loss Awareness Month. And I think that we could do something positive as a result of listening to you sharing your experiences today to go back to our churches to say what could we do to raise awareness because I personally would feel fairly confident to help somebody walking through the door but we have a whole range of what we call helpers in church church stewards or I'm not sure that everybody would feel the same so I think there is something that we could be doing to help to increase their confidence about what is the right thing to say and do um, Sensory Loss Awareness Month um, that we promote through the NHS uh, um, has three really simple messages. Tell, so that's for the person who's experiencing sight loss to tell other people how they'd like to be communicated with or what 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 they might like. Um, for us, so I would say as healthcare professionals, but for us as church members or people that have got roles in the church or even just as congregations within the fellowship to ask and not assume that we might know what is needed mm -hmm. and and just to share so that so that people know how best um mm -hmm. to, to support people so i'm really interested in the sight loss friendly church and i turned my head to log onto the computer to have <laughs> have a little Google of it. So I'm really keen to suggest to my church that this is something that we should be thinking of. Mm. So thank yes. you so much. Thank you. It's a Thanks, Anna. And and that's that's really interesting. Um and it might be something that as a synod we kind of can could do something during November uh to highlight a uh, sensory sensory loss awareness mm. that's, that's our, our next session like this is about hearing mm. in november mm. So. Mm. so yeah yeah and it's i'm going to say uh, incidentally sight loss sunday another one <laughs> is the 13th of october but it's a bit soon i realized to suddenly change things <laughs> <laughs> thanks verena um julie uh i was just going to say that what I've learned tonight is that some of the things that help with dementia also help with sight loss. Now, we're a dementia-friendly church with yellow and black signs and things like that. But the one thing I was interested in is we don't have the bumblebee tape. Is that the black and white, the yes. black and yellow stripe? Yellow. Black and yellow, yes. So when the church is put back together, that might be something that I'm asking for on our steps. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah, on mm. steps is it is you know really important. I think yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay, has anybody got any questions that they want to um, fly it, fl fling, fly, share? <laughs> Can I yes. just say one of the things that I was pointed out to a long time ago, when it comes to doing things like redecorating public spaces. We look at things like, are the door frames differentiated from the walls? Because very often we tend to do creams mm, or mm. whatever, and it all looks nice and whatever. But if you differentiate doors and door frames differently from walls, that's really helpful. Mm, mm, and that's mm. something you can do as you get round to decorating mm. without it being too jarring, but just was a point I was unaware of until it was pointed out, until I was told about that. Oh, thanks, Linda. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good idea, that's... Yes. A contrast, I think, one against the other. Mm. The same applies to toilet seats. Yeah. Your toilet seat should also be a different colour to your walls. Mm. Mm. And not black. No. <laughs> Apparently, avocado is the new... <laughs> It's a new colour. Right? That was going back to the 70s, avocado. <laughs> Standard disabled toilet seats and handles seem to be a dark blue. Right, right. At least I, I think that's what, what's the standard. Our yeah. hours, Jeff. Mm. Is our disabled toilet that colour? 
I think so. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> So, so any questions then? Oh, Verena. Ma Marty. Um, Verena said that she was going to tell us, I don't know if she still is, about the right way, the best way, the optimum way um, to help somebody who is partially sighted mm -hmm. or blind. And unless I completely switched off, I don't think she said that. Yeah, I probably didn't itemise it because there'd be a lot in, as I say, the torch trust stuff. But, okay. You know, there are certain ways, you know, people think of guiding a, a blind person by taking them by the arm. But the best way, that usually people who need it, they will tell you, don't do it this way, do it that way. Mm. But, the, you know, there are simple things like, you know, taking, set, sitting them down in the seat, you know, this, you're over your seat. You can put your bottom down now. It I, it sounds elementary, but so often it's important. Um, I you know we found even in Tabernacle that the first time people have come, you need to home them in and where they can put their 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 bag or something, um, just so that they're comfortable. And if you sometimes somebody will have a cough and you take them a glass of water and you tell them exactly, I'm putting it on the seat to the right hand of you. Is that all right? As I say, it seems very basic, but I think it's making them comfortable and, mm -hmm. you know, guiding them. And if they need the loo or something, that, again, is something that needs to be explained. Or, you know, I'll take you down there first and I'll wait for you, things like that. You know, mm -hmm. it's not good enough just to say, oh, it's through that door. No. It needs a bit more personal time to do so mm. yeah thanks Verena okay. I think we're out of time which is a real shame because I could sit and have this conversation for a lot longer um, and it may be that we um, we put some stuff together that um, is is of use to, use to our churches um, to refer back to because I think there's it, there's so much here but uh, thank you. I think um, the conversation's going to carry on as well, isn't it? I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of finding that. And, uh, and certainly with these sessions um, the, uh, on, on, on various things, uh, the, the conversation um, about more able church just continues. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're handing over to David. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Verena, uh, and everybody else for the questions and contributions. That's been really, really helpful. Uh, I think I was think, thinking from the point of view of somebody who prepares and leads worship and maybe includes visuals and PowerPoints and, and all the rest of it, uh, how to do those in a way which is helpful for people who uh, may have difficulties seeing the screen. I know we were... I'm going to go back to our synod meeting on the 12th of October. We were at the uh, venue yesterday looking at how to how to set up, and we've decided to use TV screens, big TV screens, 64-inch, rather than the projector, because I think even though the projector screen is bigger, uh, it's not as easy to see and not in not as high... But the, the contrast in the definition is much better on a television than it is on a projector screen. So we've gone for... How big are they, Maggie? 63-inch, two 63-inch TVs, 65-inch TVs to, to uh, be delivered to the uh, to the centre, Prior Centre in Abergavenny. Uh, so hopefully that will help uh, for people who are in the room, at Sorry. least, who will uh, who will need to see. Uh, just need to have put some, create something to put on them now, but that's, uh, that's, that's our problem. Uh, so yeah, so so the, so I, ideas like that and how to be consistent as well. So uh, when you're putting together worship or you're using video clips or you're using PowerPoint, how to fit to to be this to help so it's not all over the place and 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 different. Uh, the other thing is that I this just by chance this week I had a an email from the archivist in Westminster College who asked me if 
I knew, I'm also secretary of the URC's Equalities Committee, and she asked me with wearing that hat if I knew of any church or any person who might benefit from uh, a Braille copy of Rejoice and Sing. Uh, otherwise, it's going to end up in Westminster College's uh, Reform Studies Library. And I said, I don't know, but there might be people who, who would. So if you know of anybody who would benefit from a, a Braille copy of Rejoice and Sing, then drop me a line. Uh, and uh, we can uh, we can arrange for that to be uh, lo loaned to that person for as long as they uh, they they need it. Uh, that offer will go will be will be shared elsewhere as well. But you're the first first people to to to, to hear that. I think there might be more than one copy. I'm not sure, but there, certainly there is a a copy uh, of Rejoice and Sing. This Sunday, I'm uh, preaching in Abergavenny, and uh, I'm going to use the story from John chapter 9 of the man who was healed, the man who was born uh, blind, who was healed by Jesus. I'm not going to read it tonight because it's 41 verses long of chapter 9, and you can't really read part of that chapter without reading it all. Uh, but uh, you may be familiar with the story that uh, just in the first seven verses uh the describe the disciples who were who are walking along and they see a man who's born blind and they say to jesus uh who sinned this man's this man or his parents that he was born blind well jesus of course his answer is that neither uh neither this man nor his parents sinned he was born blind so that god's works might be might be revealed in him one of the things I'm going to talk about is the contrast between the way that the disciples uh, looked at the man and didn't see him uh, and talked about him, talked about his condition, made of him uh, an object lesson uh, to ask Jesus a theological uh, question. And Jesus, who saw the man uh, and in compassion and love, uh, healed, healed the man of his his blindness. And I wonder how often that applies to us, that we don't see the people with their disabilities. We see their disabilities. Uh, uh, look, don't look any further than that. Uh, how often we ignore people because they're differently abled to, to us. Uh, how often we ask maybe similar questions to that, uh, those of the disciples, without even thinking about uh, our attitudes or the way in which this might be heard or perceived by the people? Or do we see, as Jesus saw, see the people for who they are, God's children, uh, created in God's image, and treat them with honour and respect and dignity in all that we are able to do? Just a thought as we end this uh, session this evening and then a prayer. So let us pray. God of unlikely choices, nudge me when, even fleetingly, I dismiss someone as being less than myself. Help me to see that by this attitude I lessen myself. Remind me that you are in each one of your people and that as I look at each one, I am looking at you. God who pays no attention to outward appearances, who does not see as humans see, forgive me when I look only at the surface and not onto the heart. When I think I see clearly, but don't recognise my own blind spots, my limited sight, Open my eyes to see as you do. Guide me to discern what pleases you. Thank you for the times when I get it right. But lead me clearly when I get it wrong. And God of endless patience, thank you that despite my many flaws, still you see my full potential. And still you choose me. And so we thank you, Lord, for 
this evening and for our contributions. Thank you particularly for Verena and the way in which she shared her story and some of her experiences as living, as somebody living with sight loss. Help us as we go from this place to be mindful of some of the needs of others that we might see them as you see them. And we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who sees us as we are. Amen. Can I just Next. say two things as we finish, David? Yeah. Right. Um, one is, uh, and you might remember this from many years ago, that there's a book by uh, uh, an Anglican vicar, Jeff Jeffrey Lay, called Seeking Signs and Missing Wonders. Uh, Jeffrey was uh, is blind, um, totally blind, had a, a, a contracted a generative disease that... that um, and, and he came to speak to us at, at Westminster College when we were there many years ago, David, probably. Do you remember that? You know, um, you, you can get his book um, second hand for about £2.50. Uh, it's uh, it's a challenging book. It, it, he's, he, he continued in ministry and uh, and and it's it's worth a read if if you're prepared to be challenged uh, and the second thing is uh the next one of these sessions is on the 20th wednesday the 20th of november and it, and it's entitled gracious listening uh please come along and please invite other people and tell other people um because it's about learning from one another and and you know i've learned fr from all of you tonight so thank you for your contributions <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so evening. much. Thank you, Verena. Really great Thank session. You. Thank, you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.